Hi, I'm Will, and I'd like to tell you about the solar panels that I installed on my roof. This is an overview video, but I would like to follow up with a few other videos with specific details of the installation, as well as finance details and ROI information. This is an 11 kilowatt DC system that I ordered through a company called Project Solar. I'm not affiliated with them in any way other than being a customer. They have a referral program, and I'll include a link in the video description. I'm not a professional. I'm a software developer. I tried to follow safety measures as best as I could, but nothing you see in this video should be taken as professional advice. Do your own research and look into this company if you find this interesting. I hope that you can take on a project like this as well and that the information found in this video is helpful to you. Project Solar created the permit plans to be submitted to my utility and township. There's notes as well as details of the equipment, details of my property, notes about compliance. There's information on the property itself and my house as well as how the panels will be installed and where the meters and panels on the porch are located. There's specific information on the wiring, the combiner boxes, the meters, the AC disconnect, as well as my main panel. There's also detailed notes about the uh, wiring, the equipment uh, that's used in the system, and how everything's joined. There's information on the roof rack mounting, the stickers that will be applied, the spec sheet on my panels, spec sheet on the inverters, as well as the combiner box and the details about that. The Iron Ridge roof rack mounting system. And finally, the combiner box on the roof. Before I did any actual work on the equipment, I set up a diagram in Microsoft Publisher of the size of my roof as well as how the panel should look. Then I added all the connections that I would have to make the bolts that would go into the rafters and detailed measurements of where they should lay out. So once I got up on the roof, I'd know exactly where to start and how things should uh, come out. There's also fire lanes that need to be there, so making sure I counted for those. The red box is where all the wiring would join up and there's detailed measurements so that I uh, could do chalk outlines of where everything should be drilled and where everything should end up when the project was complete. The system itself is 28 Hanwha Q-cell panels that are 395 watts each. Each panel has its own N-phase IQ7 Plus microinverter, and it's all attached to the roof with the Iron Ridge roof, route, roof mount racking system. It's an 11 kilowatt DC system, and it's 13,900 kilowatt hours are estimated to be the annual production. The cost of my system is $1.22 per watt. It took some planning and some time spent going over the PDF training and inst installation guide as well as the videos provided by Project Solar to truly understand how my system would be installed. And while watching these videos it made sense trying to apply it to my own roof took some measurements and consideration before getting up there. Having the diagram and some chalk and some uh, tape measure and leveling, uh, it was fairly straightforward once I got my rhythm down. Once I had the general outline, it was just a matter of keeping at the installation. Finding the rafters took some time and getting used to, and I definitely made a few extra holes, but the caulking and the metal plates that cover keep my roof from having any leaks. I am very confident in how the solar panels attach to the roof and feel that they will be secured for very for many years. I had a lot of fun going the DIY route and I would recommend it if you feel like you can handle it. There are many companies that offer solar installation services and a couple that do have this DIY option. You can also find good information about doing a whole solar panel installation without the help of a company for even more savings, but I didn't think I could handle that level and I'm glad I had the support of a company through this but I believe now I could manage to plan out a system, do the permits, and order my own supplies. 
If you do go the DIY route or even pay a company to do it, it's worthwhile to do your research and make sure things are done right. Measure everything ahead of time and plan things out. This is going to be on my roof for the next 30 plus years, so I want it to be done right. I did keep track of how much time I spent physically working on the project, and after running the conduit, putting up the panels and meters, and actually installing things on my roof, I think I was at about 48 and a half hours. So it was definitely a time investment, but consider I consider it worthwhile. Project Solar is a good company and they gave me the best rates. They were fairly responsive to my initial questions and satisfied everything before I signed an agreement. They gave me good information and choices for payment as well as were able to uh, send me some companies for financing options. I did end up going through a local bank for a home equity line of credit and that has worked out well for me. They took care of my permits, but I did have to handle printing and submitting my township permit because my township would only accept them in person. The cost of the printing and payment for the permit was taken off the bottom line of the quoted cost. Unfortunately, a few mishaps did happen, but we were able to roll with them. The project manager that I started with left the company, and then I was given a new project manager partway through. That all went fine, but there was one thing with the approved plans that my utility company changed and neither I nor the new manager were aware of them. Thankfully, I asked my utility company a few questions about the connection process, and they made me aware of the changes and we adjusted accordingly. The supplies that were sent were incorrect and it took a while to get the right things. Thankfully, I was dealing with Pennsylvania winter, so I was waiting for good weather as well as the supplies, so I wasn't quite as in a hurry as I might have been in the spring or the summer. The person who ordered the supplies for me was new and they were able to get a senior um, senior level supplier to look over everything that I had received and correct everything. The positive spin on this was that it forced me to be very clear on the system that I had purchased and how it had to be installed and how each part worked. I now know everything about my system and will be able to handle any issues that I may have in the future. I'm looking at a return on investment of about 12 years. I believe I will have my solar panels paid off in less than eight years. The total cost from Project Solar was $16,765. I spent nearly $700 on extra supplies and that those items would vary based on the size of your system and how far you have to uh, run the cable from the panels to your meters. So these costs will vary. But I'm, overall I'm fairly happy with the quoted cost and the overall value of my system. There are three strings in the array combined into the solid deck which is where it joins before going through the attic. Then it runs through conduit down the side of my house under the back porch and over to where my main meter is. It's three quarter inch EMT conduit. The three strings are pairs of 10 gauge THWN2 and an eight gauge uh, green THWN2 uh, ground wire. They all join up in the end phase combiner three. Each pair is joined to a 20 amp double pole breaker for each string. Then the wiring from the end phase combiner goes over to a solar meter down to an AC disconnect and then finally into my basement where the main electrical panel is. All those wires are 8 gauge THWN2. The connection in my main panel is a line side tap instead of breakers as you might see in some other systems. The initial cable I was given to connect my solar panels together was a portrait size cable, but my panels lay long landscape. So as I had measured the uh, cable length, I was trying to figure out how it would work with my system and determined it was not long enough. 
uh, Project Solar replaced the cable, but I still stuck with my original plan of not putting them in line, uh, one after the other. I actually set things up so that they could all join up into the same um, spot in the middle top of the, of the row. And I think this actually made it easier. The microinverters just need power. They don't really care if uh, it's coming up in a line or not. So if you see my layout of the cable is maybe not quite what you would expect. Uh, this was how I designed it ahead of time. And I think it'll work out better for me. As I said before, there are three strings, 10, 10, and eight. Eight being at the far end and the other uh, 10 in the middle and then uh, three across the top and the last one at the back side of my roof. The day came to install the panels and I was very thankful for the help I had. I had two gentlemen on the ground who were able to pick up the panels out of the garage and hand them up to my dad who stood on the porch roof. These panels are almost seven feet tall and uh, about 50 pounds each. So it took a little bit of grunt work to get them up to the roof. At first we were installing them one at a time and handing them up as we needed them. But then after we got through the first nine or 10, we uh, handed them each up one after the other and laid them on the back, back side of the roof. And then we were able to allow the other guys to go and just finish the installation. Cable management is important. You don't want any cables to be dangling and rubbing up against shingles because over time that'll wear away the shield on the cables and cause a short in the line. But by wrapping them around the, the rails, I was able to take care of most of them with uh, some heavy duty zip ties as well as some cable clamps. I did make one mistake in when I was getting ready to cut the bottom rail at the far end. I took a measurement of 71 inches instead of 74 inches for the length of the panel. So I ended up in the middle of the process having to cut the bottom two rails uh, from the two brackets and add in longer ones from some of the scrap pieces that I had. Thankfully it didn't set us back too, ba too bad and we were able to fix that. Overall the solar panel installation went as I expected and I'm very happy with the results. My neighbor who is an electrician helped me do all the conduit running, attach the meters and panels, and do all the wiring. We ran the wiring through the solid deck, through, across through the attic and out the softened fascia, down the corner of my house, under the porch, all through a three quarter inch EMT. I couldn't have done this job without him and I appreciate all the work he put into it. It goes up through the porch to the AC combiner, over to the solar meter and down to the AC disconnect. And then it goes down to the basement to the main meter and attaches through a line side tap. I hope this video project was helpful to you, and if you like and subscribe, you'll see updates to future videos.